Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode. Of course, we're talking to Shoot Brothers Wrestling Podcast, uh, the only wrestling podcast online. It's hosted by myself, Cameron Osborne. It's also hosted by Mike the Shoot Shepherd. And uh, you're listening to episode 170. Uh, the road to WrestleMania has begun. And um, while well, Elimination Chamber coming up in a couple weeks, exciting action on All Elite Wrestling. And again, just another week in truly in, in the sport which doesn't end, never stops. That's right. I mean, even uh, even when the shows go off the air, half of half of wrestling these days is all the online drama, the dirt sheets, the tweets, uh, everything. Exactly. You we know, know the the promotions <laughs> that don't have a television deal so you only get a glimpse of of maybe someone who popped up somewhere or new champions here new champions there and uh and it's always exciting um especially on a day like today where something else is happening in the world of course the uh beijing 2022 winter olympics are also occurring today however mike today is also the nba trade deadline day uh, which is a very exciting day for basketball fans. Trade deadline days across all sports are always a blast. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, the NBA, it's just one hard deadline, right? Yeah, it's uh, something like it's like 4 p.m. Eastern <clears throat> or something. There is a fucking boop. That's that's that is the time. Yeah. So I remember baseball it was always weird. They'd have like two different deadlines. Well, yeah, they have a thing like an arbitration signing deadline. Yeah, and then yeah, who knows? I don't even know how the hell baseball works in the first. How it's even <laughs> played in the first place, yeah. let alone uh, the Raptors have made a deal already, sending Goran oh. Dragic and a uh, future first round pick over to the San Antonio Spurs for a few players. Don't really know why yet, uh, but the last time we uh, dealt with the San Antonio Spurs, some good things happened. <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> hopefully we'll see similar results as we get in here uh, to the podcast, talking trade deadline days, and I can think of no better way to talk about the NBA trade deadline, which is by crowning a brand new Tweet of the Week champion. It's the Tweet of the Week. It's the Tweet of the Week. <laughs> Uh, if we can take ourselves back to the NBA trade deadline in 2010, <laughs> maybe? Uh, Carmelo Anthony was traded from the Denver Nuggets to the New York Knicks for a whole slew of players. Uh, and it, nobody knows who really won that trade in the long... In the short term, the Denver Nuggets definitely won that trade. In the long term, eh, nobody really knows. Uh, but he was one of the faces that, you know, big names get traded on trade deadlines. And big names win Tweet of the Week championships on trade deadline days. Uh, because this week's Tweet of the Week champion is none other than Carmelo Anthony. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, um, a photo, uh, someone put a, put up a photo of online, <clears throat> this looks like a classic, this looks like a photo just ripped straight from 2005, uh, with John Cena and Carmelo Anthony posing at some kind of event. Carmelo Anthony responds to the photo saying, weird, I only see myself. <laughs> Hey. Everyone's in right. on this one. Everyone's in, in on, on it. <laughs> Carmelo Anthony, you are uh, our brand new Tweet League champion. Possibly the first, um, I got to say, I think you're the first uh, basketball player, NBA professional, to uh, to win the award. Yeah, I would, uh, I would think so. I mean, we've seen some crossover in the wrestling universe between uh, <laughs> basketball before. Of, of course. course. Yep. Shaquille O'Neal uh, has performed with both AEW and WWE. <laughs> yeah. Dennis Rodman's showed up. We've Carl Malone. Yeah. So, no stranger, but congratulations, Mr. Carmelo Anthony. Uh, this is his first ever championship in the world of sports. <laughs> Except uh, <laughs> he, won a, he won a college title. He did win a. Uh, okay. He won. Uh, he was at Syracuse, so he would have won. Syracuse. He would have won that All right. championship uh, before making his way to the NBA, where he hasn't won shit. Let's get into. Uh, let's get into this week's episode of the podcast, then, shall we? Uh, let's. 
start off uh, with our Friday night action. As promised always, uh, let's bring you some All Elite Wrestling Rampage. 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 Uh, <laughs> I don't know. That was our Billy Goat. Uh, but let's start off with one of the goats. Some say the goat of NXT. I think you and I have said that on this show. Uh, but that's not where he is. We're not talking about AEW. So we got Adam Cole, baby, taking on Evil Uno. And uh, Adam Cole was in a foul mood after that unofficial loss to Orange Cassidy, which doesn't hurt his record. But. And, and, and every time a superstar loses in one of those unsanctioned lights out matches, they're always very sure to let us know it doesn't count against their record, just in case we forgot. <laughs> yeah, just in case. But uh, he's still mad, takes it out on Evil Uno, just beats the crap out of him, super kicks his head off, and hits the boom, gets the easy win there. And then uh, afterwards, grabs a microphone and starts listing all the wrestlers that he's beaten so far in AEW and uh, just closes out by promising to become the AEW world champion. And since the uh, since the records reset, you know, the start of 2022, he is the the number one ranked dude right now. Uh, but we don't got to do Evil Uno dirty like this. Evil Uno didn't even get the televised entrance. Uh, yeah, he really. He got the jobber entrance, and so we kind of knew from the start that this was going to be quick. So, uh, I don't know. Why does that be Evil Uno? Yeah. Yeah, could have been, uh, I guess, pretty much anyone else. Pretty much anyone else, I guess. Yeah, the Dark Order really taking a, uh, a backslide here in this 2022. Yeah, now that Hangman won the title, he's really not doing much with them, and they're not getting as much TV time as a result, so I don't know. Hopefully we can turn that around. Mm -hmm. Turn it around for everyone. Yeah, but let's go on to a TNT title match. Sammy Guevara defending against Isaiah Cassidy. And uh, Sammy, he's wearing both TNT title belts. How long is he going to do that for? So, I, I I don't know, you know the black and then the red kind, uh, you know he's both kind of versions right here. Uh, it's weird though, because it's not like he unified. It's not like there's two. It's the same belt, like the interim and the regular. Yeah, the, it, you know, in 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 the world in the world of UFC, although you know the interim champion and the actual champion would both physically have two belts, they wouldn't then go carry them both around. Uh, yeah. Which is different, totally different than the Kenny, Kenny Omega having both the TNA and Impact. Although those were both, mer like, because those were unified. But he carried yeah. them both because they were, you know, two different names, two different looks added to the whole belt collector thing. Yeah, that makes sense. I just wonder how long is he going to drag. And we see, we see him on, Dyn on Dynamite this week. He'll come out with. Uh, he does the same thing. Yeah, yeah same so thing. Like eventually, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, I mean, I get it, but yeah. One belt. That's all you need. Anyways, One belt, Sammy. Match was, <laughs> match was good. You know what these guys can do. A bunch of high-flying flips, dives. Uh, Matt Hardy, he interferes, hits a big side effect on the apron. and uh, Andrade comes out. He's causing a distraction. Uh, so a bunch of shit going on. But Sammy overcomes all of it, hits a GTH, gets the win. And then... Uh, yeah, I think Andrade tries to get Sammy, but Darby chases him away. Yeah. Darby hands Sammy the TNT belt and stares him down. So, looks like Darby wants to win that title back. Looks like Darby wants it back. Uh, I feel like Andrade should be in the mix there, too. Um, but then again, this is just one of those classic, we don't we don't want to DQ the match, so we'll just have a bunch of distractions and a bunch of yeah. kind of run-ins. And Andrade, he's just all over the place. He's, he's like, he doesn't even fight anymore. He's just trying to recruit people for his... I don't even know what it is for. His business? That doesn't make sense. Yeah, the the Hardy family know. office. No, the, the Andrade, Andrade hardly... Oh, fuck. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Let's go to some women's action. Thunder Rosa taking on Mercedes Martinez. Making her AEW singles debut here. So, uh, Rosa trying to get some revenge for Mercedes costing her that... In TBS tournament match, 
Uh, but yeah, Martinez looks pretty good, hitting her big power moves. Uh, Avalanche, Death Valley Driver for a two count. But then Thunder Rosa fights back. They go to the floor. Uh, Mercedes gets desperate, pulls this steel pipe out from under the ring, and just bashes Rosa in the head, causing the rare disqualification. Chris Jericho was letting you know. He's like, this never happens in AEW, a DQ. Well, and like, you know, and like we had just mentioned before, these never do happen. Yeah, I mean, it was very rare, but uh, it was about as blatant as you can be. You can't just bash your opponent in the head with a pipe. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there you go. And the, the main event of Rampage, we had Ricky Starks defending his FTW title against Jay Lethal. So, yeah, the title means nothing, but the match itself was still pretty good. Uh, yeah, just some good back and forth stuff. Lethal, he gets control, so Power Hobbs, or Powerhouse Hobbs comes down, jumps on the apron. So Lethal drop kicks him to the floor, and then Dante Martin appears. Does this big springboard dive onto Hobbs to take him out. So Lethal goes for lethal injection, but then Starks catches him midair into the Rochambeau. That was a pretty good reversal there. That was the three count. Um, an incredible <laughs> spot. I that, that was a watch it a couple times and just appreciate it kind of yeah. thing. That made the match there at the end. Yeah, that, that, honestly, <laughs> honestly, that one maneuver there at the very end made it. Um... But yeah. yeah, and which is funny, I feel like Ricky Starks this guy where he's kind of he's turned into this rampage guy. He's uh, he fights <laughs> he like he's almost guaranteed to fight on rampage every week. Yet I feel like we never I feel like we know nothing about him. Yeah, pretty much. He's just uh... kind of like he's in that classic vein that all these other AEW heels are, where it's like they they dress. They have cool clothes, and they seemingly have money for some reason. Yeah, and they're mean. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, but uh, but honestly, that that uh, that that finishing maneuver was enough for me to put over the whole match. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, awesome finish. Uh, Ricky Starks retains the title. Uh, yeah, do we even call it? I mean, I guess they all of these ha- all of these matches have been. For that FTW championship, as as, as even even though uh, we don't care much about it, I mean he did beat Brian Cage for it, who we haven't seen in a long time. That's a good point. Like. Yeah, Brian Cage. Where's he? Yeah, um, who knows? Who knows what yeah. his uh, contractual status is or something? Yeah, I don't know. I I remember seeing something about his wife shooting shooting off on Twitter, saying like, "Oh my, you know, using Brian Cage enough. He should be world champion." Something like that. Yeah, so maybe well, that's echoing his sentiment. Maybe. Uh, everyone, everyone can shoot their mouth off. Easy there. <laughs> He's yeah. easy there, Miss Cage. Yeah, Miss Wolverine. Miss Wolverine. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Uh, great, great ending to the to another episode of Rampage. Going for that four uh, with no hook though. So uh, say what you no will. Hook. No hook. No yeah. hook. Not every week. Got to keep them special. Got to keep them sporadic a little bit. <coughs> uh, so let's move on over to um, uh, same night. Hey, we're still talking Friday night on our road to WrestleMania. The build has begun. Uh, so let's get into some SmackDown Live. Okay, folks, it's Friday night. It's time for SmackDown Live. It, uh, it used to be on Tuesday, but then uh, I think it was on Friday before, though. No, no, wait. We used to film it on a Thursday and then release it. It's just SmackDown Live. Uh, where who better to kick off the show um, than the Tribal Chief, our Universal Champion, Roman Reigns, the SmackDown Tag Champions, the Usos, Paul Heyman, the entirety of the Bloodline, kicking off the show. Um, with, uh, you know, and the big topic on everybody's mind, I think, is the Royal Rumble. Remember, this is our kind of fallout show from the Royal Rumble. What the hell happened? Yeah. I mean, they basically confirmed. They're like, yeah, we pulled the big ruse on Brock and, uh, yeah, cost him the title. And even though he won the Rumble, uh, yeah, basically, whatever. We're going to beat him at WrestleMania. Went a bit long here. Started mm-hmm. rambling. Uh, and it was about to get a lot worse <laughs> because Goldberg music hits. And, uh, 
Yeah, he just gets in the ring, says, Reigns, I acknowledge you as my next victim. So uh, you, me, Elimination Chamber for the Universal title. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, we were supposed to get this exact match two years ago in Saudi, but we didn't. See, for, and you, uh, you, know, you know that Vince is back there like clamoring over long-term booking and he's like we've been booking this feud for two years long term yes. but yet spear any, versus any, spear. Have- any other like little bit of long term like wait didn't they just hate each other kind of thing is completely forgotten about nobody even thinks about it yet this is the long-term booking payoff that Vince McMahon's been waiting for. What a crazy person. What a crazy person <laughs> he is. Yeah. I mean, uh, thankfully, this is only next weekend, so we're not going to have to see too much. Just one quick. Yeah, at least, it's not, <laughs> at least it's not many, many weeks of this. Uh, of course, Roman Reigns is the biggest star in the company. He's going to have a match at the chamber and in Saudi Arabia. Maybe this is just the best way to make it happen. Uh, because I feel like other than this, we'd be getting a like a like a like a Kevin Owens repeat or, uh, you know, so, something that we've seen. Well, I mean, I guess shit, we've seen this before too, kind of. But yeah. you know, like without it just being like you know, we could put Roman and Kevin Owens in a steel cage, and have it be you know, it could be that again. Or we just do this, fucking get it over with, move on. Yeah. No, I think. Uh... And with a show that's going to have two chamber matches on it, you know, you can have a shorter. This can be like a five-minute fight between these two. Not as important. Third or fourth important match on the card. And yeah. I mean, it's Saudi, so some of them, they'll all be happy to see Goldberg. But, yeah, most of us don't care anymore after the 12th time. But whatever. Yeah, I pers- I personally don't. I mean, oh Yeah, know. it was fun the first couple times, but now we're like, yeah, we get it. We've seen it. Well, especially because I feel like I feel like Goldberg and Brock, like there was history there. You know, there yeah. was that you know the kind of tumultuous departure, and then of course you were there for the survi- the Survivor Series that changed the world, uh, <laughs> or changed professional wrestling forever. <laughs> Arguably, it kind of changed <clears throat> professional wrestling forever. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, but you know, Roman Goldberg, what they, they just they both have spears. You know, if, I mean, for, with that <laughs> logic, you know, like Charlotte Flair should be taken on edge. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, I wouldn't rule it out. I mean, I neither would I. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, that's enough of that. Let's just go to some in-ring action. Ricochet versus Ridge Holland. The Battle of the Broken Nose. Um, yeah, I mean, it started off fine, but then it ends up being super short because Sheamus and Cesaro at ringside just arguing and... Uh, Ricochet just catches Ridge Holland with a recoil, gets the win, just like that. But uh, it was all just a setup. Sheamus is pissed off, demands a tag match, so we just jump right in. Sheamus and Holland versus Ricochet Cesaro, the original tag match from that pre-show. And yeah, <laughs> and I mean the wrestling was. From- it ends pretty yeah, much as quickly or non-ceremoniously as the Ricochet Holland match right before that. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, we didn't get a whole lot here. Just kind of, yeah, Ridge Holland comes in, hits Cesaro with the Northern Grit, gets the win. It, it, and it, it is funny uh, when these types of things happen. We'll see it with tags often, but it's never it's never a 15-minute match that then devolves into another 10-minute match. It's always <laughs> a one-and-a-half-minute match, and and then the second one that follows is also never 15 or 20 minutes. It's always like two and a half. It's like they, why not? Uh, they could have just made the first match the entire length of time or make the second match the entire length of time. Why you kind of split it up in two? Maybe just for the yeah. commercial break? Maybe. Either way, I just feel bad for these four guys. Yeah. Just kind of stuck in this mid-card hell. Especially because the mid-card championship... Uh, over here on SmackDown is kind of so seldomly seen in the first place. Here we are thinking, yeah. well, these are all guys who should be at least in the hunt for Mixing the IC title. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So unfortunate. Uh, and then we get some singles action from normal tag team uh, stars. Jimmy Uso taking on Eric of the Viking Raiders. 
who uh, are in line to get the next tag title shot. So, yeah, this is one way to drag out the feud like they like to do. Well, it's so. one way to drag out a tag feud. Yeah, but uh, Eric ends up taking the loss after Uso hits a Superman splash. Everyone's doing this Superman pose now. Uh, Superman splash? Is that what is it was? Are we calling it that on commentary now? I don't know. Well, he did like the arm. He did thing. the arm out yeah. again, uh, but it still leaves <laughs> us leaving. Like, what the hell was the point of that? I mean, um, it's still, yeah, the impact is the same. <laughs> exactly right. When a match is as long as a squash, how am I supposed to care about the outcome? Really, you know, because I I understand. You know, you have a guy. You have you have these big motherfuckers out there in a squash match. I get it. I get what's happening. But when it's two people who I think should be going at it, well, yeah, it's disappointing. Yeah, and I mean, they're supposed to be your next opponent, and you already just showed how easily you can beat them on your own. So it's like, where's the hype in that? And we will, and we will see by the end of uh, by the end of kind of the SmackDown here. There was one match on this card that was longer than three minutes and fifteen seconds. <laughs> one, and we said, um, we did, and we saw a lot of in ring action this week. Yeah. I didn't. Is it the next match or was it the main event match? The main the main event was the only one longer than three fifteen, but it was still somehow under ten. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, let's go to this next match. We've got Natalia taking on Aaliyah. Battle of the Canadian girls here. Now you like the to see you like to East. see it. Yeah, but Aaliyah, local Toronto, so I'll give her the edge. Uh, she's got a nice uh, Aaliyah three seventeen shirt. I like that. It's fun. That's, that's fun. Nice play. Nice play yeah, on it. That's fun. Yeah. That's something. Something for her. <laughs> and uh, I mean, it's merch. I don't see Natalia wearing any merch. And she's fucking. She doesn't have to rat, wear merch. You know, the Hart family. You can <laughs> she do, doesn't have to. You can do whatever you want. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, this match, it wasn't, uh, like you said, it wasn't very long, but it was longer than three seconds this time. So, uh, yeah, got to see some more moves. Aaliyah hits her cool. Uh, she does like a handstand on the top rope into a hurricane rana. So a cool little move there. And uh, yeah, they fight outside the ring. Natalia gets thrown into the barricade. Aaliyah rolls back in the ring, and Natalia gets counted out. So another win for Aaliyah, who remains undefeated on the main roster. Wow. I'm like, now this yeah, is what we like I'm, to see, right? Yeah, I like it. I'm liking it. Uh, still, like, no Zia Lee. We saw her like once backstage staring someone down, but and then and then and then she never saw her again. Mm -hmm. It's a weird one. So I don't know, but uh, Drew McIntyre comes out to talk about returning at the Rumble and uh, the guys that injured him in the first place, Corbin and Madcap. So Corbin comes out to respond. Madcap tries to sneak attack Drew, but Drew threatens him with his sword. Uh, then tells him a bad joke and hits him with the claymore. Not the sword, his kick. Uh, and then tells Corbin, you're next. So. You're next! Didn't somebody else say that before? Um, <laughs> yeah, this, uh, yeah, Drew McIntyre is way better than all of this. Um, yeah, this. Hopefully we get the, I mean, you know, the, the promo skills, his intensity, his, you know, his matches, even like his connecting with the audience, his fucking main event. Ever since, ever since he claymored Brock over the top rope, he's been a yeah. main event star, and you know, for the entire fucking time. So hopefully we can yeah. get this blow off soon, freeing him up to maybe do something a little more in line with his uh, with his in ring ability. Yeah, uh, he's booked to fight Madcap at the Elimination Chamber pay per view. That'd be nice. Some yeah, some reason. Get it out of the yeah. Let's uh, let's get that blow off match. Get it out of the way. Yeah, hopefully. Focus on some real shit. Uh, we got some footage of Sami Zayn at the red carpet premiere for Jackass Forever. Uh, but then Johnny Knoxville comes up to him and says, "Hey, you were told not to be here," and has him escorted out, and then cattle prods him from behind. Wow. Yeah. Vicious. Did you uh, have you seen the film yet? No, we are uh, we are we are looking to find a time though. Jess and I have you. No, I think I'm supposed to go tomorrow night. Good, hopefully. good, so, good, good. Yeah, looking good. forward. Yeah, to me it. too. Uh, as always, you know. I definitely, yeah, I definitely saw been. two and three in theaters. I don't know if I saw Jackass one in theaters, but 
Yeah, Jackass 3D. That was one of the best 3D experiences. <laughs> is this one? Was... Is this one in 3D? Do we think? Probably not. No, I don't think. No. I think that ship has sailed. But they made good use of the technology in the third one. They Amen. Were, it was proper 3D. Good. You know, some films just threw on the 3D without actually filming in 3D. Mm. But anyways, uh, Nakamura takes on Jinder Mahal. And uh, Rick Boog's guitar appeared to be malfunctioning during the intro. Yeah, there was a little bit of unfortunate, uh, something unfortunate there. I don't really know. Yeah. So he just did the Freddie Mercury thing. The hey ho. Anyway, the match was really nothing special. It was a Jinder Mahal match. And uh, eventually Nakamura hits the Kinsasha to get the win. So at least Nakamura is back from injury. Getting, yeah, at least getting, you know, back, getting a win. But it was like 2017 all over again. Rekindling a rivalry well, won, that once competed for the WWE Championship. <laughs> but the right man won this match. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If only. I mean, that was. Yeah. Poor Nakamura. Anyways, New Day taking on Los Lotharios. Uh, we should mention Big E has been quietly but officially moved to the SmackDown roster here. So no more. No uh, invitations needed for him. It's yeah, uh, yeah. This quiet is uh, would certainly be a good way to say it. Um, so I guess Biggie will no longer be judged under the branch brand invitational rule. Yeah, and I mean how? Uh, I mean, this is how little they think of him. He was traded for future considerations, a former world champion. Wow, like former, like this year, or like you know, this, yeah, like months, kind of like this months ago, yeah. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, this year even, day one was when he lost mm-hmm. it. So, yeah, crazy stuff. But, I mean, at the very least, New Day's back together. Uh, Six Xavier's still out, so I guess maybe that's why that's they did pr- it. Yeah, that could be why they wanted to do it, you know. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, I mean, the crowd was still hot for the New Day. and The Lotharios hang in there for a bit, looking pretty good. Get a couple near falls. But the New Day fight back, hit the midnight hour to get the win. Um, which is good for them, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, like we said, I mean, this bad for Big E. I mean, it seems like the singles push is over. I don't think he has any. I mean, WrestleMania will probably just be in a tag match. Yeah, unless Maybe we can, unless, you know, we can put these belts on him, hopefully. Uh, on the Yeah, the Usos got to drop him eventually. But yeah, sooner. there's no yeah. clear direction for either of these teams coming into the chamber. So... I yeah. think it was a couple chambers ago where the chamber match was a tag match, correct? Or it was a team tag team match. Yeah, we have had a tag team chamber and the fucking Lucha House Party. That's what it was. Yeah, they're hanging off the top. I remember that. Yeah, it's going crazy. <laughs> but uh, we got one more segment here. Sonya Deville is in the ring. Charlotte Flair comes out. and Sonya tells Charlotte that Becky Lynch has informed her that Rhonda told her <laughs> that she's challenging Becky at WrestleMania. A lot of he said, she yeah. said. Yeah, so uh, just like that, uh, she expects a contract signing on Monday. So that means, Charlotte, you need a WrestleMania opponent. And uh, I'm going to let you uh, decide for yourself. So Charlotte just starts cutting a promo, putting herself over. Says Rhonda's scared to challenge her, so I'm going to pick I'm going to pick Sasha Banks to fight at WrestleMania. But then Ronda Rousey comes out and gets a very loud reaction, mostly cheers this time. And uh, Ronda says, "Enough of the she said uh, she said shit." Last time I checked, I won the rumble. I'm the one picking who I get to main event WrestleMania with. And uh, you are one of many that I owe an ass beating to. And you're not special, but you're first on my list. So I'll see you at WrestleMania, bitch. Uh, and then Charlotte. Pulls out a zinger, says, yeah, well, this title is my baby, and she's prettier than yours. Ooh, ooh, coming after the kid. Yeah, you don't mess with the new mama. Don't mess but with the Ronda's new mama. pissed. Yeah, she takes off the jacket. She's ready to fight, but Sonya says, cool it. And Ronda shoves Sonya. And then Sonya, very unprofessional, just jumps on Ronda's back. And, uh, but Ronda just judo tosses her to the floor, locks her in an arm bar, makes her tap out. So uh, Ronda just stands tall. Stares down Charlotte to end the show. And yeah, they made the right choice, I think, putting Ronda with uh, Charlotte over Becky. Because. At least if they want to get Ronda cheered, I mean. 
Yeah, well, and that's and and that's what is funny, you know. Uh, it would be hard to see who's like the clear babyface and clear heel in that matchup. Yeah, uh, and you know, leaves Becky and Bianca the rematch that everyone wants to see. And I guess it leaves Ronda and Becky again for, or like rather, you know, the two of them in the future when there are clear roles between the two. At WrestleMania thirty nine. That's the Hollywood, right? Yeah, yeah. they're gonna have Rock versus Roman and Becky versus Ronda. Yeah, That's yeah, and, but but like both Becky and Roman are still gonna be <laughs> champions, so they're gonna be sitting at these fucking uh, thousand day reigns. Or Ronda, or, or Ronda could be uh, having a one year reign as well, and her and Becky unified. Their yeah, year reign. yeah. I don't know. Who knows? This is all future booking, but uh, that was SmackDown. That was SmackDown Live. It's great end to the great end to the show. Just wish there could have been more fun in ring action. Yeah, uh, over yeah, over the really over those two hours, there really was. Nothing. Yeah, no matches to really say. Go back and watch. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, but that's the way it should go. Some weeks. That's the way it goes sometimes. Let's move our way through the weekend, uh, and over to uh, Monday. Because if it's Monday, <coughs> only one thing can actually happen. It's Monday Night Raw. Let's get raw. Let's get raw. The only thing on Mondays that matters, football season is over. Well, at least uh, well. weekly uh, weekly action is over. Of course, Super Bowl's coming up this weekend. Uh, and we are still on the road. It's still sign point in season. This week's episode of Monday Night Raw opens uh, with the Alpha Academy in RK Bro. They're standing there in the ring for the final round of their competitive series. Uh, this one will be a quiz bowl, uh, a series of questions. Gable uh, cuts off uh, our in-ring announcer so we could explain the rules to uh, himself. <laughs> and it sounds kind of like most trivia <laughs> rules. Don't know if we necessarily needed that explained to us. Yeah. Yeah. Standard. Standard, Standard trivia Standard trivia here. style. No smartphones. First uh, to five points gets the win. Uh, yeah. We won't go question by question, but basically uh, Gable gets the first one. U.S. President gets it right. Riddle takes biology, and he correctly guesses that an octopus has three hearts. Uh, so Gable, next question, he gets it right. Orton up next picks cartoons. He gets a Ninja Turtle question, which the crowd was very happy to see. And uh, who uses the nunchucks? I think most of us, uh, well, the crowd, they were yelling this one out. Michelangelo. We all know that one. And, of course, Riddle says, cowabunga, dude, Michelangelo. So, uh, yeah. I didn't Finally, know that. Got- I didn't know that. You didn't know that. I couldn't. Now, the, the, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles weren't, uh, like, staples in my uh, kind of, you know, ethos. They weren't staples, but I still think... Uh, like, I know I could name all four of them, but if it was, like, which one wore the yellow bandana, I would have no idea. Yeah. Well, no one wore the yellow, so that's even Purple? Worse. Pur- no, it was purple, yeah, the- blue, red... Red uh, and orange, orange. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. See, like I have okay. bits and pieces of knowledge. Yeah, not enough. Not I'm enough. Glad, uh... Not enough. <laughs> Anyways, Otis he picks geography and he gets that one right. Uh, Riddle picks pop culture. That's a question about Justin Bieber. Uh, neither him or Orton know the answer, so they get it wrong. Alpha Academy with the steal, they get it right. So now they're only one away from the win. Uh, it's a question about Shakespeare. Otis keeps saying ham, but Gable keeps shushing him and says Romeo and Juliet, which is incorrect. So Riddle comes in for the steal, says Hamlet, which Otis was like, ah, I was trying to say that. Even though he's <laughs> just saying ham. Anyways, RK Bro, they pick sports, uh, and it's a question about the Denver Broncos. And wouldn't you know it, we're here in Colorado. Uh, so, of course... Uh, they pretty much got a free lifeline. It's multiple choice. So Randy Orton asked the crowd, hey, who's the, uh, I don't know, what is it, most games played quarterback or something? Something like that? Doesn't matter. John Elway, he's the answer. So uh, (laughs) 
We're tied 4-4. Four to four. Next correct answer wins the whole game. So Gable, he gets to pick. He goes with metric conversions. And the question is, how many grams are in an ounce? So I think we all see where this is going. Uh, Gable gets it wrong. So RK Bro, for the steal and the win, Riddle is about to speak. But Randy Orton says, aha, I got this. And Riddle's like, how do you know the answer? Randy says, you think I'm the only one that bakes, bro? Well, woo! Everyone goes, ooh. They're in Colorado. Legal <laughs> marijuana. They are in Colorado. Yeah. Also, I think Randy fucked up his line. I think you're supposed to say, you're the only one that bakes? Yeah, he, he messed it up a bit, but hey, we get it. <laughs> we all get it. Maybe he was baked. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so we all know Randy. He's a vapor. He likes his he likes his He likes to vape. Fun. We know this. Uh, and he tells us that there are exactly twenty eight grams in an ounce. Correct answer. So they've won the quiz bowl and earned themselves a title shot. Uh, and then at the end it was weird. They kept hitting the buzzer and Gable was selling it like it was hurting him. I didn't understand that part. Yeah. It was he was just being he was just he was being like, He's like ah yeah, he was just yeah, being he, just over, he was just being over the top uh, yeah. with it all. Um, you know, although this wasn't a bit that we'll be talking about for years to come, it could have been a lot worse. Like it, this could have been terrible. We we've seen this before, yeah. <laughs> where these funny, very promo and kind of audience reaction heavy segments have gone terribly. And this what this was not one of those. It went oh, it got no. over with the crowd. It was way less ridiculous than it could have been. Yeah, it was good enough. It wasn't too stupid. You had some crowd engagement with the Denver. Good Broncos enough. See, there. that's what I left. That's yeah, all I want. From, that's all I expect <laughs> from Monday Night Raw these days. Just good enough. Yeah, yeah. and uh, we followed up with a match. Street Profits came out to fight the Alpha Academy, and yeah, the match as well. It was good enough. You have two really good teams here, and uh, Ford. Once again, this is his new new part of his repertoire. This Superman dive to the floor he does, which is crazy stuff. And uh, back in the ring, though, Gable counters Dawkins, rolls him up uh, for the three. So Alpha Academy get the win. Gable with a bloody mouth there. Bloody mouth. Yeah, something happened. Yeah, I don't really know what happened there. Uh, yeah, decent tag. Yeah, uh, Street Profits is kind of floating around right now. Yep. Very much so. Yeah. Who knows? They'll probably have some big multi-man tag at WrestleMania or something. Right. Well, we'll, well you know, we, we, we'll probably have that Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. I don't think we yeah, had I it think, last year or the year prior. I think last year it was on SmackDown. It didn't even make the big Yes, show. it didn't even make the actual, uh, the pre-show of day one or something. Yeah, it didn't even make that, so... Uh, up next, MVP introduces Bobby Lashley, who gets a huge cheer as we are here in his hometown crowd. So this was babyface Bobby. He was high-fiving the fans. They were chanting his name. And yeah, feeling good. Uh, yeah, that must be tough to book <laughs> where you're looking at your schedule of live shows. You're looking at kind of like the booking of, you know, your actual programs leading up to pay-per-views. And then you're like, shit, we are in... Our top <laughs> heels hometown. You're like fuck, fuck. Like you, yeah. you can't, you can't spin it in a way that gives you the result that you probably want. Yeah, and I'm glad they didn't try. They let him lean into it. He was happy to be there. They acknowledged it was his hometown, so he didn't come out there and be like, oh, "I hate this hick town" or anything like that. Oh yeah. Well, has anyone ever like, has anyone ever gone in on their hometown? Like I, I feel yeah. like MJF even <laughs> wouldn't even do that. No, it's been done. People yeah. have done it, but yeah, just for the heat. Yeah, just, just like you know, heat. you're like, welcome Toronto. You guys fucking suck. <laughs> yeah. Like boo. No, I think I think like Canadians have done it. Like that's why I moved to LA to get away from this shit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, Stuff I can like see that. something like that. Yeah, <laughs> moving. You know, I, that's why I moved to the sunny streets of Florida. Yeah. Or, okay. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So, anyways, MVP Lashley, they just cut a promo. We'll talk about Lesnar, that upcoming Elimination Chamber match. So. Mm -hmm. And then more therapy. Alexa Bliss, uh, therapist gets her to hand back the replica Lily doll, and she starts crying. But 
you know, no freak out. She's still just slowly transitioning more and more to the goddess. Well, and they have a shirt now at uh, www.shop.com. It's uh, like Lily in a straight jacket <laughs> in a padded cell, and it says something like Alexa Bliss goddess or something like that. <laughs> okay. We'll see. I didn't see that one yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, AJ Styles takes on Damian Priest. Which, on paper, this is a pretty big match. Uh, I mean, up until recently, Damien's very protected. AJ, one of your top guys. But, uh, no, it ended up being a pretty quick match. Under five minutes, I think. Um, Still pretty good wrestling. But uh, AJ hits the phenomenal forearm, gets the three. A clean win over Damien Priest once again. Which has started to to lose its luster already. Well, yeah. I mean, this is Damien Priest's third loss in... Um, kind of, kind of, you know, a month maybe, a little bit less than a month. Yeah. Uh, he first took that first loss to Kevin Owens, the first actual pin loss, uh, and then it was a DQ, I think, a couple weeks back, and now this. Uh, yes. and for we were talking about this streak of his for months on this show. We've been talking about the streak, and it feels like it's it died without anyone really talking about it. Like nobody, no, yeah, nobody was really he... pumping. Even on commentary, <laughs> like Jimmy, uh, you know, none of the commentary team really felt like they were giving me the. He's never been defeated on the main roster, and then even when it happened, yeah. it was more just like a shock. Just like of any shock when somebody beats the champion in a non-championship match, I felt like there should have been more fanfare to all of this because Damian Priest has been crushing it for your whole fucking brand for like you know. This man's 40. Can yeah. we, we cut him some fucking slack? He's 40. <laughs> yeah, no, they are. I mean, ever since the stupid Damien side of him has come out, he's... Uh, Why does know, everybody need a side his... of them to come out? Can't they just fucking go in the <laughs> ring, compete, and win? Yeah, I don't know. I think that they booked a U.S. title match for next week. So, who knows? AJ might even take it from him. Yeah, I mean, well, maybe not before the chamber, because uh, I think AJ know. is in that chamber match. I think. Oh yeah, he is. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, it, it feels like it's uh, it's coming. It's coming. Uh, they finally announced the women's elimination chamber match. Uh, for the right, the winner faces Raw Women's Champion Becky Lynch at WrestleMania. So you got Liv Morgan, Rhea Ripley, Nikki Ash, Dewdrop, Bianca Belair. And a sixth mystery. Uh, we don't know. We don't know yet. We just don't know. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, Bailey. Return of Bailey. Could Asuka, be. Yeah. Those. Either of those two people. Yeah. Uh, Miz and Maurice come out for Miz TV. They bring out their guests, the Mysterios, and everyone's bickering. The crowd's chanting cheater at Miz. Uh and Miz disrespects Ray, so Dominic gets in his face. And Miz says, hey, you sure you're not Eddie's son? Which was a fun little throwback. Classic uh, throwback. <laughs> so this causes Dominic to shove Miz and uh, leads to a match between the two of them. Uh, Dominic's in control. He goes for a 619, but then Maurice trips him up. The referee sees this, ejects her from ringside, and... Uh, as she's arguing, Ray trips up Miz on the other side. So some fair turnabout there. And uh, Miz is pissed. Dominic rolls him up and sneaks out with the big three count. Yeah, but this was barely a match. I swear, uh, backstage <laughs> fights have lasted longer than this. Yeah, it was really all about the ringside drama. Um, yeah, I don't know. Miz and Maurice, they're they're just kind of jumping into another feud, and it doesn't really. Yeah, with another two people. Fun. Yeah, mom or, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Bianca Belair takes on Nikki Ash, little elimination chamber tune up. Uh, Belair gets her leg caught in the ropes, so she starts selling her knee, and uh, but she's still able to just muscle Nikki up with one leg, hits the KOD, and uh, yeah. It's kind of a cool look as well. Bianca, her hair wasn't quite tightly as wound up, so it was kind of cool seeing some little bangs and stuff from her. <laughs> We've never seen it before. Wow. Usually her hair is yeah. so... I mean, that whip, it's so tightly around, you don't want it coming loose. That's a good point. That whip. 
I don't know where the real hair begins and the fake. I hair. who knows? I that's you know. I think that should be. That's the real. That's the real. That's like a trade secret. Yeah, that's the real shoot. Yeah, I have seen a picture of her once without anything in her hair, and she looked. Still very long hair. Still, I, I imagine, you know, to, to put on extensions <laughs> that long, I feel like it needs to be long yeah, enough in the first anchor. place. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, good anchor. But uh, we go backstage. Dana Brooke thanks Reggie for all his help and gives him a little kiss on the cheek. But then after, he's like, whoa, wait, we're just friends? And they hug. And So I don't know. Romance angle. Another, I think, is this Reggie's second romance angle? Yeah, at least. What? He was with Naya before? I think so. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Owens takes on Austin Theory. This one was actually a pretty good match. Got a solid amount of time here. Uh, yeah, both men pulling out big moves, trading near falls. Eventually, Owens hits the stunner, gets a hard-earned victory. Um, against Austin Theory, though, who, despite the loss, this was the longest match of the night. Yeah, no, probably the best best match for sure. Probably, the, possibly one of Theory's best since coming onto the main roster, especially coming off of uh, his long uh, Rumble tenureship. Yeah, I mean he'll be in the Chamber match as well, yeah. so we'll see. He'll probably more. have he'll probably have a good showing out there. Yeah, I mean unless Brock Lesnar just kills everyone, <laughs> who knows? But uh, Lita comes out next. Cutting a promo about her upcoming title shot against Becky. So Becky comes out to respond, and they end up coming to blows. But Lita gets the better of her. Hits Twist of Fate and the big moonsault to stand tall. Okay. Yeah. No, that should be a fun little filler match. Battle of the Redheads. <laughs> is, that what we're call- is that what it's being called? Is that how it's being uh, yeah. spun? That's what I'm spinning. Right on. Uh, we get some more women's action. Liv Morgan taking on Dewdrop, and uh, during Liv's entrance, one of her her little statistic fun facts said she recently bought her mama house. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, that's very nice. <laughs> anyway, the match itself was pretty nice as well. They got a decent uh, amount of time here, and crowd still super behind Liv. Uh, she puts up a good fight, but eventually Dewdrop. Hits the Vader bomb to get the win. Uh, Dewdrop, you know, keeping momentum going. This was one of those, you, I thought both of these needed momentum, especially Dewdrop being a heel, I think, still. Yeah. Uh, I guess they're both in the chamber, right? Yes. Yeah, so. Yeah. Maybe they'll. Yeah, we'll see more of them soon. But uh, Seth Rollins takes on Riddle, which uh, on paper, this is a nice wrestling treat mm-hmm. here. Uh, so it starts off as a good, you know, good competitive match. Riddle hits a big floating bro onto the floor. But then Kevin Owens shows up, attacks Riddle, causing the DQ, ruining a good match. So Orton runs out. <gasps> hits an RK bro to help his bro, or an RKO to help his bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, of course, we book a tag match. So, RK Bro takes on Owens and Rollins. And, uh, yeah, it was fun. Crowd was hot. Uh, eventually, it comes down to the original match anyways. So, we're back to Rollins and Riddle. Rollins hits a curb stomp, gets the win. And this was almost booked the exact same way as we just saw the same thing on SmackDown, right? And Ricochet, Ridge Holland, and then James <laughs> Cesar came out. But uh, the answer, the answer to the length of the match must just be star power. Right, this this kind of combo of four has enough star power for 15 minutes of wrestling, where the star power combined of Ricochet, Holland, Cesaro, and Sheamus is only four minutes worth. <laughs> right, yeah. because I because it's it, we we did the exact same thing. We did the exact same thing. Just one lasted a long time, and one didn't last very long at all. Uh, but you're right. It was fresh matchup, you know. So there's always that like slightly extra level of excitement. You Rollins Riddle, we're like, okay, I haven't seen this 200 times. So let's <laughs> let, <laughs> let's go for it. Yeah. Uh, you know. But yeah, no clear winner, and then we kind of go to this uh, this double thing. So you know, I guess that's the way you got to do it. Hmm. But. Uh... Yeah, that was Monday Night Raw. That was Monday Night Raw. Uh, Mike, should we take a break? 
Yeah. We're going to take a break. We're going to come uh, back with all the action from this week's edition as 2.0. Um, NXT 2.0, of course. Of course, we're talking about Dynamite. We still got a lot of stuff uh, ahead of us. So, folks, you're going to want to stick around. <laughs> Back here with part two of the FOD podcast, folks. Woo! Hope you, uh, hope yeah. Thanks for sticking out through the break here. Um, through, uh, w- w- what this crazy NBA trade deadline already. Um, Mike, uh, yeah. when is the, uh, NHL trade deadline? Soon. It's in February. Uh, any, any hopes, uh, things that the Leafs could do, you think, uh, possibly? Um,. I mean, they'll nothing too crazy, but certainly buyers rather than sellers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Probably just try to get another D man, another depth forward, or something in case anyone goes down with injuries. But I don't know. I mean, we're still, yeah, still just chugging along. Doesn't matter until we hit the playoffs. Yeah, it doesn't die. Not, nothing matters until we hit the playoffs. We can move up a couple. Hopefully, we can move up a couple spots there. I think we're hovering around the fifth. Yeah, we can win. We've played a lot less games than everyone else because of. Oh right, because stuff, a lot so. of postponing. But a lot, I bet a lot of Canadian teams are in that same boat. Yeah, so we can still win the division. I mean, Matthews can still win the, the Rocket, maybe even the Heart. Wow. But, yeah. Anyways. Uh, hockey's going on. I mean, the Olympics. You've been watching any Olympic stuff? No. Not that it's... No. <laughs> I throw it on in the background. I don't really pay... I mean, the women's hockey is good because it's still the top. The uh, the Americans versus the Canadians. That was a good game. Yeah, it's still, it's still the top competitors in those fields, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not like the, the NHL where they can't go or whatever. Mm-hmm. The men's. Uh... Anyways, let's get into some wrestling, shall we? Let's get into um, the rest of our wrestling week. Of course, we've moved on through Monday to Wednesday, or so Tuesday. Uh, so let's get into this week's edition of NXT 2.0. NXT, but, um, what does it mean? But, um, I don't know, but, but it's but, good but, wrestling. But, 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 so NXT, but, um, watch and see. But, um, how to tap out a count out but, um, of one, two, but, three, but, so but, where the Dusty Cup tournament uh, continues to uh, to move along. We actually open up with one of the matches from that Dusty Tag Team Classic. Of course, we have the Creed Brothers taking on the Grizzled Young Veterans, who are not too young either. It's almost like an oxymoron there. <laughs> but. Yeah, more grizzled than young. But, uh, yeah, semi-final match here. Hard hitting. Crowd was real hot. This this whole night, this crowd was awesome. Uh, but they were cheering for the Creed Bros, just chanting Creed, Creed, Creed. Yeah, uh, just some awesome old school traditional wrestling. Uh, Girls with young vets, they uh, they slam the one guy underneath the the bottom of the ring. They like catapult him into the steel beam that's holding the whole thing up. Uh, that allows the grizzled vets to gain control for a bit. They hit a doomsday device. And then they get Brutus Creed in the corner. I finally learned their names. So <laughs> Brutus is in the corner. And then Julius comes running in. He jumps. Julius jumps over top of everyone, like right onto the top rope to hit a big superplex. And that's when the Creed brothers just unleash a flurry of offense and uh, get the three count to advance to the finals of the Dusty Classic. Which Ad- will be next week at Advancing Vegas. to the finals. Yeah. Now it- I think they're going to win it. Is that going to culminate at the uh, at the Vengeance Day? Yes. Okay. Next week, they'll take on the winners of our other match. Yeah. But yeah, these Creed brothers, I think they're uh, they got something here. They're really. Which is funny, because really um, you know, no matter how green they kind of started, the two of them looked at first. Uh, they are the most important part of the Diamond Mind right now. Diamond Mind. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, and they've got an intensity to them. They're like a, they're like a little Kurt Angle, Brock Lesnar type of thing. Almost, like yeah. That's yeah. a good way of putting it. Not, I mean, those are big, big names to follow in. Uh, but uh, yeah, looking good so far for the Creed Bros. Yeah, not too bad. And uh, in a mat, in a long match too. 
felt like yeah. there was actually the time. Tag. There was some time for shit to happen here. Yeah. Uh, then we go to some women's action. Tiffany Stratton taking on Wendy Chu, who, much like me, has already had a lot of the fans. She's won them over. They were chanting her name. Uh, she was high five, and she even gives a little mini teddy bear to a kid in the front row. He was super pumped. Mm -hmm. So nice little, nice little thing there. And uh, Stratton yells at Chu for stealing her credit card last week and going on a shopping spree. But Wendy doesn't care. She's uh, having fun. She's doing good. Her little, her sloth style, uh, frustrating Stratton. I like how she did. Uh, she did one move. It was like a running elbow drop where she did like the sleepy pose. The yeah, game. like a like a like go to sleep <laughs> pose while yeah, you're going she, like, in the elbow drop. You. Everyone's doing shit in the air these days. Everyone's doing yeah, poses in funny. the air. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not enough just to do a movie. No, anymore. it's not. You got to do it in the fucking yeah. But Tiffany is not impressed. Uh, she's frustrated and ends up breaking one of her nails, and that really sets her off. So. She unleashes on poor Wendy and pulls out this cool finisher. It was like a corkscrew Vader bomb. She did a whole 360 in there. I don't know how she did that. That's her gymnastic background. Yeah. Yeah. Don't know if I... So, uh, I don't know. I still... Th I, don't know. I, I, I think I prefer Wendy Chu between these two things. Uh, where <laughs> Tiffany Stratton, for me, feels like the the NXT character actor right where uh yeah. where it's like you know you're going for gimmicks very very early 90s late 80s wwe it's like you're a gimmick and that's your thing and that's who you are uh but the performances just feel a little bit like they're coming up too short Maybe she's being brought yeah. up a little too early where I can see Wendy Chu um, short of, you know, knowing her career as a professional wrestler. She has way more experience than any of these new women coming up. And uh, that's including, yeah. you know, the likes of Cora Jade uh, and others. Um, the one in the diamond mind, not mine, whose name I forget now. Ivy Nile. Ivy Nile. Yeah, Wendy Chu is clearly the... <laughs> Although she is only like thirty years old, she's clearly the the most seasoned one of them all. Yeah, and I mean that shows that she was able to just pull out this brand new gimmick, brand new gimmick. Uh, yeah, that should have been the fucking first uh, obvious thing. <laughs> it's like she turned this around in two seconds because she knows what she's doing. Yeah. Well, then in a couple of years during a promo, someone can drop that line, be like, "Hey, Mei Ying," and then people are like, "Woo!" I don't know. No one probably will remember. Uh, anyways, yeah. Let's move along to Pete Dunn taking on Draco Anthony, where uh, I think most of this match took place in picture in picture. I don't know. Yeah, it, uh, yeah, I think it may have. Yeah, so. Well, I didn't get to see a whole lot, but uh, Dunn's just doing his little joint manipulation, working over Draco, and uh, Tony D'Angelo shows up. Tries to attack, but uh, Dunn thwarts him, and back in the ring, he hits the bitter end to get the win. And then he just starts going under the ring, pulling out weapons, tossing them all over the place, and grabs a microphone, says, how about we take all these weapons, attach them to a cage, and have a weaponized steel cage match at Benjamin's Day. Weaponized steel cage, similar to the stipulation that you and I both saw um, <laughs> Johnny Gargano and Adam Cole take on. Which was yeah. in what feels uh, like a lifetime ago. Yeah, damn. I mean, that was... Fuck. Haven't been able to see a wrestling event since that weekend. Nearly three years ago. And this, and this, is, this is what's so hard about, a, you know, a, a, like a, brand, a new brand where we're trying new things with new people is that somebody ends up losing. Right? Where you're yeah. looking at it and you're like, oh, this brand new character continues to lose draco anthony or draco did they pronounce it in one way or another uh i think draco but i'm not draco sure. yeah who is now lost i guess two weeks in a row straight here on uh on nxt but still yeah. like that doesn't feel good you know it's like i wonder if nxt will ever incorporate that main roster jobber thing or would they worry <laughs> well, that even the jobber, you know, when somebody jobs out to Wardlow, some local talent or something, 
Would they mm-hmm. worry that even that local talent would have more experience in the ring than some of these other competitors? Certainly not Peter Dune. But if you were to put a local jobber in the ring with Tiffany Stratton, there's a chance that local jobber has more experience than the person who's actually going to go over. Yeah. 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 I wonder. Uh, yeah. No, I don't really know what the... Uh, I think Draco Anthony was really just... Uh, yeah, treated like not much here. No. But who knows? Who knows what they want from him? Uh, let's go to L.A. Knight taking on Sangha. Who we finally given this giant man a name, Grayson Waller's uh, associate. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, the match goes on. Waller distracts the ref, removes the turnbuckle pad, but then it backfires as Sangha is the one that gets sent headfirst in the exposed steel, and LA Knight hits the big neck breaker to get the three. So this monster has been defeated in his first match already. Um, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, good for LA Knight to get a win because we've been saying this for weeks. LA Knight is literally the f- complete package. Yeah, yeah. Crowds liking him as this baby face, and uh, I mean, you and I have been saying he's main roster ready, but yeah, who knows what they want to do with him? Other than not bring him up to the main roster, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, we go back to the ring. Wade Barrett. We got a table. We're hosting a championship summit between Braun Breaker and Santos Escobar. So not quite a contract signing, but pretty similar. They just kind of come out, sit at the table. There was still a table there. Yeah, still a table. Uh, They talk about the upcoming title match at V-Day when Dolph Ziggler's music hits. And uh, the Zig man himself comes out and the crowd's chanting, holy shit, they're chanting Ziggler. Some of the biggest reaction he's had in years. and uh, Yeah, he sits down, calls out Breaker, and says, Hey, man, you've been tweeting about me. Who the hell are you? And Breaker says, I'm the reason you're down here, pal. And, uh, I'll, handle you. I'll handle you after I handle Escobar. So Ziggler just lists a bunch of his accolades, all the titles he's won, but says there's one title I never held, that NXT championship. So the crowd starts chanting, Triple Threat! And then Tommaso Ciampa comes out, so now they're like, Fatal 4-Way! This crowd was loving everything. Uh, yeah, Ziggler and Ciampa, they exchange words and brawl to the back. And Breaker fights with Legato. They triple-team him, slam him through a table. But, yeah, this was kind of cool. Ziggler getting such a big reaction being down here. Well, of course, uh, you know, I mean, Braun Breaker won his Twitter League Championship last week after calling out Dolph Ziggler. Yeah, they must have. Uh, he must have been listening to the show, Ziggler. He he must have been. He said, "Hey, well, you know, if these guys are uh, are talking about it, it's got to be a big deal." And you're right. Uh, it feels like the uh, the the biggest deal that Dolph Ziggler has felt like in a long time. Yeah, like the crowd was chanting at everything he said, cheering for everything. Mm-hmm. So that was cool. Maybe they'll do this more often. We had AJ last month or a couple weeks ago. I mean, it sort of feels like we're on that course, right? You want to get eyes on the product. We want it, uh, NXT to feel bigger, maybe more legitimate. Uh, you know, and you're only going to use it with top talent kind of guys. You know, you're not going to throw Tiffany Stratton in uh, the ring with Tris Stratus and have a battle over the, T- the, bl- the TS. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh Let's go to Saray taking on Dakota Kai. Uh, yeah, match was pretty good. Dakota just healing it up, and saray has got the crowd rooting for her, and uh, it works out. She hits this big basement drop kick against the ropes, and then the Saito suplex to get the big three count. So nice win for Saray, but Dakota Kai just getting lost in the shuffle here need to call her up i think yeah someone needs to get moved see i thought this felt a little bit sloppy or rather too sloppy for saray who has been here for a long long time uh she sort of seems she doesn't really feel to have much chemistry with a lot of people here in this nxt women's division uh, hmm. which for me, yeah, which for me, yeah, it, it must be tough, you know, um, talented, but has to find a level of comfort that she still, I just feel like she isn't quite there yet, especially when you're losing or sorry, when you're winning, de- beating Dakota Kai, 
And they just go down like, shit, like, what are you doing now? <laughs> yeah, and the whole, like, transformation thing is still kind of weird. Like, before she comes through the curtain, she's got that jewel and the the schoolgirl outfit. I don't get it. They don't. They didn't really explain. Yeah, that. it's clearly Whatever. like a, it's clearly a Sailor Moon type situation, right? Yeah, Where you're one person one. and then you say a magic word and then you're another person, but they haven't explained it yet. Maybe they're worried yeah. that some kind of backstory too similar to Tian Sha or you know in a T- Tian Sha style didn't go over already. So like, well, we can't do that same thing because you, you can't transform from one person to the next because that already didn't work. <laughs> yeah, no idea. But we get another promo for Nikita Lyons. Less singing this time, but I'm still. Oh, not thank very God! Excited. Thank God! Yeah, yeah. She doesn't seem doesn't seem that exciting so far. No. But let's get something uh, more fun. We got another the other Dusty Cup semifinal match here. MSK taking on Malik Blade and Idris Sanofi. Uh, yeah, just a good high flying, fast paced match. Crowd was hot, back and forth. Uh, eventually, MSK hit their finisher up and over to get the win and advance to the Dusty Cup final for the second straight year. For the second year in a row. Mm-hmm. I guess maybe last year was kind of like a gimme year. Maybe. Uh, they didn't get to have the quite, like, you know, the celebration that they maybe necessarily wanted. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like, cause, but MSK was always going to win uh, here. <laughs> <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the way it should be. And that MSK versus Creed Brothers, that should be a that should be a good match. Good final. Well yeah, because it feels like between one of these two teams, one of these two teams will dethrone Imperium. Yeah. And uh yeah, that's the that's the way it should mm-hmm. be. Let's go to the main event. We got Mandy Rose defending her NXT women's title against Kaylee Ray. And this was another, yeah, good competitive match here. Crowd pretty split, chanting for both women. But uh, no toxic attraction at ringside. So Mandy showing she can handle business on her own. And uh, Kaylee, at one point, she goes for a KLR bomb, but Rose counters with a code red. So nice little reversal there. Uh, But Kaylee regains control, climbs up the top rope, and this is when Gigi and JC come running out. They distract the ref, push Kaylee off the turnbuckle, which allows Mandy to hit the C trigger, get the win, retain her gold. Uh, Even with the interference, though, I thought this was a really good match. One of Mandy's best. Yeah, uh, it was probably as good as Mandy Rose's matches have been here in 2.0 since she's come back. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, this is another one. uh, This is another one about length. Like a championship match that's under ten minutes, you know where it, like it just feels it needs to be a little more important, especially because neither one of these two competitors are the Lesnar Goldberg types who beat you in less than ten minutes. That's their thing. They are so incredibly powerful, and every single one of their blows is so devastating that after seven and a half minutes, you can't take it anymore, and you're pinned. Uh, in a situation like this, though, I feel like these matches need to be a bit longer because neither one of these two, neither Mandy Rose nor Kaylee Ray, are so physically imposing that they should be, you know, that after seven minutes of beating, you're done. I don't know. That's C-Trigger. It's pretty good. <laughs> so it's a devastating move in all sports entertainment. I mean, I think Kenny Omega even tweeted about it. He did. He did tweet about it that one time. You know, of course, of course. Yeah. But I mean, we're talking. Just Kenny Omega, we're not where he is. But on, he can put he can put on a seventy-five minute classic and <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, in a blink. Yeah. Well, well, I don't think you'd want seventy-five minutes from these two. Well, I, 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 <laughs> yeah, that would be tough. That would be but, laboring. Yeah. But I get it. Yeah, they could have could have got a bit more, but I still enjoyed the match. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then afterwards, Toxic Attraction, they go to bash Kaylee in with her own baseball bat until Io Shirai comes out, makes a save. Her and Kaylee clean house. Stan Tall is the... Uh, Io Shirai's still kicking around down there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Zoe Stark was talking to her. She's like, hey, you should, I'm injured. You should go find a partner without me for the Dusty Cup. Mm-hmm. And then Io's like, I don't like people. Hey, I'm injured. You should go up to the main roster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
But uh, yeah, I thought this was a fun episode. We got some good matches and the crowd. This was one of them. I mean, the crowd's always pretty good, but they were super hot all night long for everything here. Hot crowd, hot crowd. Sometimes, sometimes all you need to really, uh, you know, change the game. Give that extra. Yeah, I can turn a four and a star match to a four and a half or more. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, honestly, sometimes <laughs> that's all it is. Yeah. Let's move across uh, to our very <laughs> next night to the other brand. Of course, uh, let's get into this week's edition of All Elite Wrestling Dynamite. AEW. All Elite. They coming for you, Vince. Better watch out. It's too sweet. Where we're already promised, we already know what our main event's going to be. It's going to be um, Adam Hangman Page, our champion, taking on Lance Archer in a Texas death match, whatever the hell that means. I hope that both Shivani and Excalibur explain it to me the entire time. <laughs> but to kick off this week's edition, um, we're actually starting with, uh, well, Wardlow kicks off this week's edition from live from Atlantic City. Uh, coming down to the ring, uh, carrying two cardboard cutouts um, of MJF and CM Punk, him on a submission, uh, MJF sitting in that classic kind of CM Punk pose before handing a script over to Justin Roberts uh, to read, to introduce, of course, FTR, Tully Blanchard, Sean Spears, and then finally MJF. Yes, um, who comes out carried on a throne. Uh, not just a throne, a palaquin. At least that's what Excalibur <laughs> said and for, uh, prompting yeah. JR to say, What'd you say? A what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and if yeah, you were so to search you. a palanquin in the dictionary, no, I, it is exactly as it is described. Excalibur, not only in the in the, ter- the professional wrestling terminology, no, the, the lexicon of this man far exceeds that of any co- college professor you will ever have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, along with this, uh, what's, what is it? Palaquin? The word? Yeah, the Palaquin. Uh, <laughs> we also had some beautiful women with MJF. The first one kisses him on the cheek, but then the second one, he just hardcore makes out with her. Uh, he went for it. He yeah. went for it on the He went for one. it. Uh, so, yeah, it gets in the ring. Confetti's falling. MJF grabs a mic, starts putting himself over for beating Punk. Uh, yeah, crowd just giving him lots of heat. Uh, and he's like, but you know... There's one guy I couldn't have done it without. Sean Spears, baby! So, once again, Wardlow just getting the shaft. Uh, MJF says, it's time I became your AEW world champion. And I agree with him. But uh, CM Punk does not. Comes out. And he says, today I've got some backup with me. As Darby Allin and Sting come out to his side with baseball bats. Punk demands a rematch. MJF says, whoa, I beat you twice. Punk says, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the guy that beat me in Chicago, Wardlow. So, uh, yeah, he says, you wouldn't have won anything without him, so grow some balls and leave these jerks, Wardlow. And uh, the two of them negotiate back and forth. Eventually, MJF says, how about this? If you find a partner, you and the partner of your choosing can beat FTR tonight, I'll give you your rematch. But... Your partner can't be Sting or Darby Allen. So. Mystery partner. Yeah, a night full of mysteries. Uh, we didn't mention, but Tony Khan is promised. The Forbidden Door is being busted open. We're getting uh, some debuts of some sort. Maybe even multiple. But anyways, lots of mystery in this show. A lot of mystery in the show. Strong segment to kick off the week. Uh also, if MJF's kicking off the show in a promo, it's probably going to be pretty damn good. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, Wardlow hangs out, though, because he's got a match taking on The Blade, who uh, does pretty well. He lasts longer than most of uh, Wardlow's other recent opponents. Puts up a good fight, but eventually he gets caught in that powerbomb symphony. So that ends the match for him. The, s- the symphony. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then we got a teaser for Penta after the effects of that black mist kind of turn, teasing this uh, returning as a darker form. What does he call? He calls himself something. Yeah. Well, not sure, but it was this entire segment narrated by uh, Pack. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, it was, he was narrated by Pac, unless they were just kind of, in a way, taking uh, previous kind of promo f- audio and then kind of splicing it in there. Um, but yeah, uh, Penta kind of approached this graveyard thing, although we didn't see the Kings of the Black or the Knights of the Black or whatever we're calling it. Although we didn't see them yeah. this week, their presence, I, I, I think, will soon become huge. Yeah, I mean, we're still waiting for this uh, this first other person to join their group after returning. And, yeah, we'll see if Penta comes back transformed in any way. We'll see if Penta comes back, see if Julia Hart makes that uh, the transition over there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But now it's time for the Inner Circle to come out because Jericho has called an Inner Circle team meeting. But at first, it's just Jericho, Sammy Guevara, and Jake Hager who come out to Judas. I haven't seen Jake Hager in a long, long time. No, he's uh, yeah, been pretty quiet. But uh, Jericho says, we haven't seen Santana and Ortiz all day. But then their music hits, and they come out on their own. And Jericho asks them what the problem is. You know, a couple weeks ago, you didn't tag me in. You disrespected me. You robbed the fans of seeing me wrestle. He started sounding like a jerk here. The fans were booing Jericho a bit. Mm-hmm. A little bit. The point. A little bit. Yeah. He's being kind of selfish, so Santana says, Enough of this corny shit, Chris. At the end of the day, Chris Jericho only cares about Chris Jericho. Any fight we've ever had has always been for the betterment of you. And, uh, you know, anytime we get close to a title shot, we have to come running to fight your battles. And uh, Am I wrong? And the crowd chants, no. And, I, yeah, we're all on his side here. <laughs> he says, our days, our days of second fiddle are over. And you better thank Ortiz, because if it wasn't for him, I would have dropped your ass a long time ago. So Chris Jericho responds. He blames Eddie Kingston for, for them turning on him and says, I made you more money. I gave you more spotlight main events. Uh, you had your chance at the tag titles a year ago, and you lost to the Young Bucks. So I brought you into the inner circle. I can kick you the hell out. Maybe I invited the wrong two members of LAX. So that sets off Santana. He grabs Jericho, but Sammy pulls them apart says, Stop! Chris says, Shut up, Sammy. So now he's turning on him, too. Sammy just says, I don't know what the hell's going on. I love you guys, but Chris, I gotta be honest. My goal is to become the greatest champion, and all this bickering is not going to help. So you know what? And then he takes off his inner circle vest and says, Unless you figure this shit out, I quit the group. He lays it down, walks off. So Ortiz finally has his turn to speak at the end and just says, let's settle this next week. P and P versus Hager and Jericho. And he had said, uh, um, or Sammy said, I quit once before, I'll quit again. And I was like, oh, yeah, you've already done this, you little bitch. <laughs> yeah. uh, what's up with what's up with Sammy Warren quitting all the time? Um, but I don't know. Hey, Ring, yeah, Ring, thought... Ringo quit once, too, and he came back, so... <laughs> <laughs> he came crawling back. Oh, no but... way. They needed Ringo back. Well, um, uh, yeah, I thought this was awesome promo work from Santana. Yeah, somebody who uh, we don't get to hear too often, or yeah. at all, if for all the reasons that he laid out in the promo. Yeah, I pretty much agree with everything he said and hoping that uh, Ortiz and Santana do end up breaking off. You know, and, and you know, and maybe the cherry on top would be having Hager and uh, Sammy Guevara uh, agreeing with them, possibly ganging up on uh, Chris Jericho, yeah. setting Everyone him up. kick him out. Yeah, beat him up. Kick well, him and, and we do have to wonder, eventually Chris Jericho will have to kind of wrestle in his last match. Or yeah. his last program, or whatever. There's going to be a final kind of thing. Is this it? You know, the uh, the decimation of the the faction which once ruled AEW. I don't know if this is the exact event, um, but it's going to have to happen eventually. I mean, fuck. Even what Ric Flair went until he was sixty-ish, probably right. <laughs> when was that? Yeah. How old do we think he was in that? Uh, the Shawn Michaels mania match. I mean, I know he went back after that or to yeah. TNA. I think, uh, I feel like he might have been under 60 in that match. You got to wonder, right? Kept... You got to wonder. There's that point. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you know, Jericho versus Sammy Guevara. That wouldn't be a bad 
retirement match have the Sammy, the guy you took under the wing to be the one to clip your wings. Because you know, however it happens, Chris Jericho will be heavily involved in how it, that happens, and I think the company will respect enough of his wishes, uh, yeah. you know, to, to go over the way that he wants to. Yeah, but uh, we'll see. I mean, I don't think anyone's going to force him into it. It's uh, how long he wants to go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, then we cut backstage where Tony Schiavone is interviewing Rapongi Vice, which is the the team name of uh, what Rocky Romero and uh, Trent Beretta. Is Trent that Beretta. Yeah, Rapongi Vice. I didn't know. Is this their New Japan team name or something? Yes. Something like that. Well, they get interrupted and beaten down by the Young Bucks and Adam Cole, and then. The switchblade Jay White shows up. So he has walked through the forbidden door. Uh, and uh, I, I thought he was going to show up way before, like a year ago or something. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's here. I mean, this is, uh, I mean, Tony Khan teased forbidden door. So he delivered on that, I guess, right? Delivered on that promise, I guess. That is the door. But. We still have more mysteries to solve because up next we have Isaiah Cassidy taking on a mystery opponent for uh, the face of the revolution qualifying. Right. Match. Of course, we're going to get <laughs> we're going to get a ladder match at Revolution in March. Probably with an opportunity for championship like kind of qualifying match. You know, the ring will be hanging above probably like it has been before. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we already got that Jay White surprise. We're getting another surprise as the mystery opponent is Keith Lee. He's here. No bear cat. No shirt when wrestling. Once again, this is classic Keith Lee. Just the classic Keith Lee that we want. Yeah. No shirt. No in love. <laughs> Former NXT champion. The crowd is all cheering. They're singing. Bask in his glory. And, uh... Yeah, he just comes in hot, just throws Isaiah across the ring. Some crazy height on this. He literally from he, one side of the ring to the other. That was a massive toss. That was <laughs> massive. Yeah, so Lee just dominates him all around, hits the Big Bang catastrophe to get the win and advance to that ladder match. Yeah, it's and, been a long uh, time, long time since I think uh, – we got to see Keith, Lee, not only Keith Lee, but Keith Lee the dominating. Keith Lee. Yeah, in such yeah. a fashion, in NXT Same. style fashion. Yeah, watching him just throwing so, people around. Um, yeah. yeah. And then after private party, try to attack him. The Mark Quinn does a tope in hero, but Lee just catches him midair, right into a power bomb, and slams him down on Cassidy. So more strength it just felt great it felt truly like I, I feel like Keith Lee's run at least on the main roster compared to what we saw now we were watching somebody unhampered by unnecessary little tweaks to his look or little yeah. alterations to his name the way he performs uh, he's gonna find huge success not only here in AEW but you know we know AEW lets people work with other companies, right? You know, it opens the uh, opens the road for him to show up on PWG. Who knows? For all we know, New Japan is asking for Keith Lee. Um, <laughs> I think I think what this means for Keith Lee is a, is really great things going forward. The possibilities are limitless. Truly, they truly are. Well, now we go to FTR taking on CM Punk and his mystery partner. The mysteries all all through the night. Ah, so many mysteries. <laughs> uh, this one ends up being John Moxley. So you know nothing crazy, but a very strong choice. Can't go wrong there. Yes, less uh, mystery, still good. Still what yeah. people want to see. And yeah, this is just a great, fantastic traditional tag team wrestling here. And, you know they fight into the crowd and back, and uh, John Moxley gets put through the timekeeper's table, which. Is now every week being broken. This poor thing. Poor, poor table. Uh, Those poor carpenters <laughs> over there at Ollie yeah. Wrestling. I'm gonna j Jimmy rig this thing together every week. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that weakens up Moxley. FTR just double team him. Get some near falls. Punk gets the hot tag, and him and Moxley hit a doomsday device. Uh, 
And then Cash Wheeler grabs the ring bell, nails Punk in the head behind the ref's back. And then Dax follows up with the brain buster, but Punk somehow kicks out of that. Big near fall. So FTR pick him up, and then they hit the big rig. But John Moxley's able to break up that pin. And then, uh, yeah, the ending, we just get this great sequence of counters, reversals, one after the other. CM Punk locks in the Anaconda Vice. Cash taps out. But again, Aubrey is distracted with uh, the other two guys. So this is when Tully climbs into the ring. And uh, CM Punk attacks him, picks him up, but struggles. <laughs> I think it was... <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, was, okay. I, I, and Tully Blair's probably what seventy years old. I know it's probably sixty-five. It's I'm not gonna blame. Him. It's not like when Brock was trying to eliminate Shane last weekend over the top rope and Shane didn't jump. Like this is completely different. I feel like Tully tried to jump. They kind of got their timing off, but then it happened eventually, and they made it yeah. work. No, it was just funny because I mean CM Punk. He's done this move to Brock Lesnar. Sheamus and tons of big guys. Well, yeah, guys who <laughs> guys who can thrust themselves up. Tully Blanchard can't do I know, I know. I just thought that he'd be strong enough just to muscle this old man. <laughs> right. Like, okay. if, it, yeah. if a fire broke out where we hey, he had to save Tully's life, I think he should be able to just muscle Right, him. okay. Okay, I see what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, no, obviously Tully just tripped. And, uh, yeah, it was funny. He Anyways, he gets him up. He hits the GTS. And then another GTS on uh, Cash while Mox hits the paradigm shift on the other guy. So... FTR's out. Punk gets the pin. Uh, earned himself that rematch against MJF. Not only earning himself a rematch, but by doing so in one of the one of the best dynamite matches that we've seen. Yeah, this was fantastic. This it was Tag hot. Match. The crowd was hot. Everyone was hot in this, and it's funny. AEW, we, we you know we in AEW at least we know Moxley to be the singles guy. But I think the two matches that boom come up straight for me. If I'm thinking Moxley matches in AEW, I'm thinking this. I'm thinking uh, Double or Nothing 2021. The Young Bucks taking on Moxley and Kingston. For a guy who is known as a singles guy here in this company, incredible, incredible chemistry in in tag matches that he just kind of gets thrown into. Yeah, and this was their first time ever tagging. They never once, not even on a house show in WWE. And that's the thing, I feel like their WWE schedule wouldn't have ever quite lined up. You know, of course, CM Punk brought it was CM Punk brought up the Shield, but the Shield became so big on their own that they didn't need Punk, and Punk didn't need them. And yeah. this was really just uh, everything kind of coming together. Yeah, no, this was just a ton of fun, great match. Uh, yeah, nothing bad to say about it. Yeah, I, I, from Atlantic City, by the way, ho- the home of GCW. So we knew, we knew Moxley was going to get a good reaction. <laughs> yeah, I think they even chanted GCW. Wow, well, they certainly, well, our main event's coming up where uh, GCW comes to full force. <laughs> yeah, we'll get some, some ultra violence shortly. But uh, before that, Jade Cargill defends her TBS title against AQA. Very strange name. I'm not sure what it stands for. I probably stand for something, but Booker T trained. Booker T trained. <laughs> Booker uh, T trained. I mean, you may have recognized her. She competed in NXT as Zeta Ramir. Uh, I did ago, not so. know. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, she was. A th- yeah, I remember her basically for one thing. We'll get to it in a minute. Uh but yeah, Cargill tries to boss her all around, but then AQA fights back and hits a beautiful shooting star press, which is the only thing I remember from her NXT matches. It was it, it was a good one too. Yeah, yeah, it was picture perfect. The crowd loves it. A big deer fall. Crowd popped big for that. Uh, yeah, like I said, the only thing I remember from her NXT run, but wasn't enough to get the job done. Cargill fights back, hits the jaded, gets the win, retains her belt. So 27, 27 and 0. Yeah. yeah. Getting up there. Uh, then we go with another women's match. Serena Deeb takes on Katie Arquette. But before the match, Deeb is cutting a promo. She's so cocky that she's imposed a five-minute time limit on herself. And she she doesn't even need that. Barely even needs one minute. She just bosses her around, locks in Serenity now for the easy tap out. Serenity now! 
Yeah. Uh, but let's go to that main event. Adam Page taking on Lance Archer. AEW world title Texas death match where there are no pinfalls, no countouts, no DQs. The only way you can win is by knockout or submission. So pretty much the last man standing with submissions thrown in. <laughs> yeah, or yeah, countout, knockout, or submission. Uh, yeah. No pins. Bizarre. Bizarre, weird kind of three things to... Either way, no DQ. Either way. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We're going to see some violence. Uh, the fight starts in the gorilla position as they uh, just kind of spill out. It's weird how their gorilla always goes like up a stairs. I guess to the ramp is elevated, but they fight up the stairs onto the stage. Uh, Paige nails Archer in the head with his title belt, and then he smashes him through this glass tunnel. Which I wonder, what was that pane of glass doing there? Like the entrance <laughs> tunnel just had glass in it. Besides being there to be smashed through, like like <laughs> yeah. what's on the other side of the tunnel? <laughs> like it's not like Stone Cold was there and it breaks and he walks out. The classic entrance. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't matter. It was there. He gets thrown through the glass. And, of course, that just gave him an excuse to get the old razor blade. He comes up bleeding profusely. Uh, they get back to the ring. Hangman hits him with a buckshot lariat. But, of course, he cannot pin him. So the ref starts to count. But Archer just gets up at number nine uh, and grabs a garbage can lid and just starts beating Hangman with that. This is when Dan Lambert comes strolling out, and he unscrews the top rope. Uh, very clever, as we'll see, because Hangman and Archer, they fight their way into the crowd, and uh, Hangman does a big moonsault off a balcony, and then they go back to the ring. Hangman wants to hit the buckshot lariat, but now the top rope is broken, so he can't. Very clever. I love that. Smart move, smart move, and thanks, uh, JR, for letting us know that's what was happening. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Lance Archer then goes and grabs the, the broken metal turnbuckle and it's got the big steel hook on the end and he uses that to just gouge the hangman, uh, which causes him to open up and he's now bleeding all over the place. Much more than Archer, actually. And, Way more. Uh, yeah, this was a good He went a deep. He went there. deep on that one. <laughs> he went deep and he'll, yeah, he'll, he'll keep it going. Uh, Archer sets up two tables beside the ring and then peels off the mats to expose the concrete floor. And this is when Jake the Snake gets involved. He hits Paige with a clothesline, which had the crowd going wild, and he wanted to do a DDT. But then Archer got a little jealous, so he's like, no, he stops him. And, uh, this is when Hangman grabs a kendo stick, starts beating him around with that, but then Archer uh, picks up Hangman, choke slams him onto a garbage can, crumples that up, and then he reaches into a boot, into his boot, and pulls out a fork. So just like Abdullah the Butcher, he takes the fork and just stabs away at Paige's forehead. And, and then the sick bastard <laughs> licks the fork. And thanks for JR for letting us know. That's a classic Abdullah the Butcher move. <laughs> yeah. But the licking of the fork. That's, now, that uh, was something new. That's where, in my, I was, I was like, even like, huh? That was this moment where I'm like, do you think. All elite wrestling stars get regular STD checks. That was the first I mean, thing. That, yeah, that's I a, mean, you think, that's a risky you think, move. You would think. Bizarre. Yeah, but not, uh, but not like weekly or anything. I was. So, I, yeah, I, I don't uh, know. And I'm sure that was improv. I'm sure he didn't plan to do that. He just did it on the spot. Yeah, probably, probably. Some sponsors would probably be like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> yeah, DBS is sitting there like, uh, <laughs> "Excuse me, sir." We, yeah, we mostly play daytime Tyler Perry shows. We're not licking bloody forks here. I mean, is that cannibalism? Uh, it'd probably be on a border know. somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, that crazy sick fork spot. Uh, but he's not done there. He goes and grabs the steel steps, turns them on their side, goes back in the ring, picks up the hangman, and I'm thinking, surely he won't do this. <laughs> but then he just does. he tosses him over the broken ropes onto the steel steps onto the floor he bounces hard crowd is going nuts just chanting holy shit Paige is covered in blood he's beaten up well uh, yeah that's the bl the blackout right the big move holy shit spot holy he fucking bounced off of that thing. yeah off the step and the margin for error there is pretty small like, pretty damn small thing. and even <laughs> I, on the replay i just kind of in my head i'm just like boy, 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 boy. <laughs> like he fucking <laughs> skipped 
<laughs> that's yeah the steel their steps are different from wwe they're not like they're kind of hollow in the middle so yes. I guess it gives a little bit yeah of a, a little bit of give probably <laughs> making them a bit lighter you can a lift them better, up a little bit easier yeah. yeah still crazy spot uh and then this is when archer pulls out a chair that's wrapped up in barbed wire brings that into the ring uh picks hangman up ready to slam him down onto it but hangman is able to grab a piece of the barbed wire right off the chair and just punch archer with it and then he wraps it all around his arm to hit a big discus discus lariat and then he drops the barbed wire to the mat so when the referee goes to pick up the barb uh hangman flips over the ref's back perfect mount to hit the buckshot lariat onto archer off of the apron, crashing through two tables onto the floor. So just so many things at once. Craziness. And uh, the ref starts counting. Page gets in the ring. Archer does not get up by the count of ten. So Hangman wins, retains the belt. In yeah, a, just a fantastic. In a big match, Paul Turner makes yeah. the count. Adam Page retains his title after the match. Adam Cole, baby, makes his way down to the ring, grabs the AEW title, and, well, gently places it over Adam Page's shoulder. As commentary yeah. leaves us uh, wondering the possibility of maybe Adam Cole as the next contender for that championship. As, yeah, they, he is the number one ranked, as we said, so... Yeah, I kind of thought it was going to be MJF next, but it looks like they're booking Adam Cole, so that could be the Revolution match. I mean, that's a big time. That is a big time match. Um, even though this one, this one was also a big time match. Hey, Art, Lance Archer started this matchup having no shot in hell of winning, uh, but the match was laid out in a way that maybe uh, towards the end we thought maybe he could. Uh, yeah, although it, was... it didn't, although it didn't happen for him, when matches are this violent, uh, no one, there's no, there is victory and defeat when a match is this violent. And uh, Hangman yeah. and Lance Archer comes out looking okay. Yeah, you got your money's worth on this one. Lots of crazy, crazy spots, blood everywhere. Uh, yeah, can't complain about anything on that one. Uh, yeah, and that was dynamite. No. Uh, no Brian Danielson. I was hoping for the follow-up on that offer to Moxley. Yep, no Danielson. That isn't to say that, you know, it's not coming. It's not coming. It might be. It's not coming. I just, yeah, I just want to know. Mox, what are you going to do? Uh, but no, some great, great wrestling on the show. Some fun appearances. Keith Lee, Jay White. And, uh, you know, every month, someone 90-day contract is going to be up, so... <laughs> and there's a whole so there's a whole handful of people whose 90 days are up, right? And they're just waiting, yeah. just waiting their time. So right now, Keith Lee is the only entrant that we know of yet for this uh, ladder match. And over the next few weeks, we will get uh, a clear picture of what that looks like. Yeah, should be fun. Well, it's, uh, that was our issue of Dynamite. So let's give you our final segment of the day before we head home. It is, of course, the Wrestler of the Week. With the Wrestler of the Week. Mike, I'm going to give it to you here first. Uh, we're just looking straight at um, Hangman Adam Page after an incredible main event. Uh, the buckshot over Paul Turner was a hell of a move. It got everyone excited. And, uh, you know, I think this is our last two um, Adam Page matches. We've seen him uh, covered with blood. He's really putting it all in there for the championship. And you are the wrestler of the week. Yeah. I mean, Hangman, since winning the belt, he hasn't wrestled much. But every single match he's had has been pretty, pretty spectacular. So... Uh, yeah, I'm going to give him the unanimous decision. Hangman Page. I mean, Lance Archer put up a great fight as well, but Hangman took the bigger bumps. He bled more. So I'll give the edge to the Hangman. The Hangman, Adam Page, getting uh, getting hit what he deserves, quite frankly. And uh, that's all the time we have for the show this week. Thanks for listening, folks. Rate and like, subscribe. The show is everywhere. We'll be back next week as we prep ourselves for the chamber. 
one of the, uh, you know, of course, our structure count will be on. I will be counting every single time Corey Graves or Michael Cole says the word structure or uh, the synonyms they use to kind of, you know, encompass the meaning of dangerous, uh, devilish. Uh, you know, any of these sorts of words that just describe how truly gruesome the structure is. And uh, it's always one of my favorite pay-per-views. Yeah, and uh, we got Vengeance Day next Tuesday, so mm-hmm. it'll be a fun week. It'll be a fun week. Thanks for listening, folks. Enjoy the rest of your day. And, Mike, you take care of yourself. Yeah, have a good one, and uh, see who gets traded. Two.